Welcome to WestgateWorks.com Ferro Cement Tutorial Number 3 This rough sketch is the basis for this sculpture. This almost 6 inch diameter mahogany obsidian sphere is incorporated into the sculpture. To provide a more stable base for the obsidian sphere, we've made a larger base that will fit inside of the sculpture. It's been serrated so that it'll fit into the cement because the PVC pipe works very well with, with uh, concrete. To protect the sphere during construction, it's been wrapped and, uh, with uh, foam so that it can't get damaged. First off, you need to measure approximately how much material we're going to need. It's going to wrap around this. And this is about 11 inches halfway around. And it's going to stand off, so I think we need about 14 to 16 inches of, of mesh to start with. So we're going to begin by cutting, just to be sure, I'm going to cut off 15 inches of wire mesh for this piece. The mesh is cut and we're going to start forming it. I'm going to stretch it a bit because we're going to have a bowl here fit around this ball. It's going to be approximately that much and it'll be trimmed and this will all have to be formed in and cut okay this wood anvil is made out of 2x uh, and you can make it any size or shape you want to and now it's made to fit securely in this vise so it can be used for forming the expanded metal. So we have a start. All right. These cuts can all be wired together later, as you will soon see. We're going to use a number 16 gauge wire for the edges so that we can make them smooth. I need to measure approximately how much we're going to need. We're going to need about two and a half, so about four feet. I 
and for convenience we'll use the cuts at the top so I need to have a lip here okay and we fasten these uh, the wire to the, to the mesh with the number 22 gauge wire and make a U-shaped bend. And you just twist and tie it as often as it is needed. These are little doodads that are made up for feeding through the wish, mesh and holding a piece of wire. They're made out of camping tie downs. They work really good. It has a pinch button and this has got a hook on it and a handle and that's very simple. So we've got this so far, I'm going to check it out and see how this all works together. It's too high. Alright, there's the tip. So, so far so good. We're going to pass a few more pieces here so it doesn't get away from us. It can always be cut off and moved if they have to be. So make a curve for bending the back here so we can keep it straight. I'm going to cut way wide just in case. Okay, so we've got the rough piece finished. I have to trim some more, make sure that everything is in the right place. Some more wiring. You flatten the wire against the, uh, the guide wire and we fold it in. That's why the guide wire needs to be smooth and where you want it because it's the guide. Okay, so we're done with that. We need to do just a few more really quick finishing touches before marking and cutting the hole for the PVC sphere support.
So that completes that completes the manufacture of of the armature for this sculpture. The finished armature. We're going to cover the outside surface with masking tape in order to fill it from the inside with mortar. Otherwise it's a difficult task trying to get mortar to fit on this. The rapid set mortar that I use is about, uh, I do about a half a cup at a time because it sets very quickly. And uh, so we'll start that now. This batch happens to be a dark blue because it's left over from a previous project. But it'll work because it's all going to get covered up. This will end up being the, uh, the matrix, the core for this piece, and that's where all the strength comes from. So we're off. We brush it in. As you can see, it's a very thin mix. to make sure that all the moisture stays in there so that this Let's see what the result is here. This has been kept in wet rags overnight. It's pretty stiff. We can unmount it now. is. So now the project process will be to remove the tape which sticks surprisingly well to this wet cement. We'll be painting it on the inside so we need to be pretty thin mix. Smooth this out a little bit. Use a, a rubber spatula thing. After several more coats of cement sanding and scraping. The inside is done, and now I put a, the uh, lip is going to be the same colors inside, mixed with other colors. So I put on the lip, and it's very rough because I use the brush and a punch to make holes in it, so that the other color will fit in it, so it's not all smooth. I 
start at this point. I put on all of the red colors, and these points will end up being red spots in the black finish that's going to go on over this. And it starts with carmine red and goes down to a less red and disappears, and the base of it, all this in here will be um, black. So that's the next to the left of the color ring. This is the messy part of this job. Uh, wearing protective clothing, everything. Uh, started to wet sand with 50 grit uh, diamond pads. Then we go back down, we'll end up with a thousand eventually. So. Much has been done since applying the outside red color. This polishing step shows that the black colored cement needs some help to match the solid black color of the obsidian sphere. A black permanent marker pen was used to color the black portions black. The final finish is an acrylic that keeps the cement from leaching and changing color over time. The finished sculpture turned out quite well as can be seen in this 360 degree view. We hope you enjoyed this video.